You, you sure you want to go there? Go outside, what you, you go outside. You sure you want to go there? Okay, let's go there. <laughs> it's not true. Wrong. You want a true or false statement? Congressman, I, I want to know. I'm not, I don't want to argue with you. I want to explain the facts. And she was so salty that he broke this down. So we got Byron Donalds on the Breakfast Club, and man, this lady Angela Rye just absolutely embarrassing. I mean, I. It's got to the point where people, even women, are like, yo, this lady has to be stopped. Like, this is ridiculous. This was a 4v1 by far. This was a 4v1 conversation. But they came swinging. But he was ready. I mean, he came with his facts. Like, the car facts. Like, literally papers of facts, which we're going to get into. Um, So, Byron Donalds came up here. And he was talking about abundance of different things. Uh, reparations. His comments on black people are doing better under Jim Crow, which he debunked. Um, uh, immigration, inflation, uh, police immunity. But the biggest takeaway was two parts of this video. And I'm going to show you the first one. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm um, super helpful and also support is free. And um, just thank you guys. He would like to give that same immunity to law enforcement. True or false? Well, let's let's expand that a couple true things. True or false? You can't ask true, a true or false, that, Angela, is, because you got to explain simple... the details. No, see, this is the problem. I don't want you to explain the details because when you explain the details, Why you don't want people to hear the details, the Angela? The, the details are what are things that matter. You got to explain the details or then you just talk. You're just talking. And then explain. If you don't, if you don't explain the details, then you're just talking. You don't want to say that because you know that it's not true. That is not true. You want a true or false statement. Congressman, I want to know. I don't want to argue with you. I want to explain the facts. And you already saw her smiling. If I just go back a little bit, this is the face of somebody who knows they fucked up. Probably. I don't want you to explain the details because when you explain Why you the details, you don't want people to hear the details, the Angela. The details of what. See that little smile? Really subtle. So they ask a question about immunity and Trump, and she doesn't want him to give the details. She wants him to answer her question first and give a true or false. And that's just a bad faith argument. And that's how they pivoted over into where. My dog, I mean, I got to call him my dog now because I'm not on either side of this thing. But when you see somebody come into a situation where they go 4v1 against a whole interview panel and it's like bad faith arguments, it really makes you wonder like, yo, I, you got no choice but to stand behind this dude. So this is how they lead into the conversation where Byron ends up pulling out facts on how Kamala actually destroyed the entire economy and put us in this in this situation so please tell me how america is not a racist country um uh, first thing i would say is that our past is a dark one it really is we can't we can't walk away from that uh we had whole laws that were subjugating black people in the south of this of this nation for decades after the civil war we can't walk away from that one um i believe that in america we have great people in this country and we have some people quite frankly that even i can't stand but they're the vast, vast, vast minority of people in our country. Most people just want to live in harmony and peace. That's what they that's what they really want. I think the important thing to acknowledge today is what's going to help black people going forward and what's going to help black people moving forward is economic policy. It's actually wide open energy policy so we can be energy dominant. It's, yes, securing our southern border because we have a situation right now where, yeah, there are more than 15 million illegal aliens in the country. Where, where do they reside? Mostly in sanctuary cities like New York. Where are they at? Sanctuary states like Illinois, like California. What's happening in those cities? Hospital systems are overrun. Why are they overrun? Because you have people in the country illegally who don't have resources, so they're going into the emergency room. Where who, well, what are they taking up? They're taking resources from poor people in our country, whether they're black, whether they're Hispanic, whether they're white. That's wrong. What about education? We have a situation where in too many inner cities, kids are not reading at grade level, or they're not doing, they don't have math skills at grade level. How does that help them excel and achieve? I don't want to discount what Angela is saying. I don't. I acknowledge the issue of our nation, but we always are trying to strive to be the more perfect union. So in 2024, what are the economic policies? What are the national security policies? What are the border security policies that are going to make our country thrive? Yeah. So whether you black, Hispanic or white, you could thrive. Why? And so and so I think it's so important. Then, I don't you, wanna... Would you have to say that if it wasn't a racist country, whether you're black, white or Hispanic, you could thrive? No, no. Are what? we thriving? Is your, are, are members in well, your I would state argue black? We're not, I would state, argue right? we're not. This is where it gets real. OK, when they ask, well, are we thriving? She kind of set herself up for what's about to happen by asking that question. If I was her, I would have just completely avoided this, quite honestly. If I wasn't ready to accept the truth, of course. Not really thriving right now, 
This inflation, which, by the way, was brought to us by Kamala Harris, is, has really slowed down people from being able to excel. By Kamala? Yes. The vice president. <laughs> oh, oh, Charlemagne. It's but still the president. Charlemagne, listen, man. When Joe Biden wanted to do his American rescue plan, Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate. She broke the tie that started this inflation that has hurt so many people in our country. Everybody listening to your show. Is, who's, it's not true? First sure? of all, it's, you wanna, it's you just sure true that it's a tie-breaking vote. You, you sure you want to go there? You go outside, what you, pulling out? you go outside You sure you want to go district? there? Okay, let's go there. You, see, you, had it pretty you got well. notes. I, what I, you got notes, Angela. See, this is what this is what I want y'all to pay close attention to. Pay very close attention to this part. This is how we miss stuff in politics. All right. That's fine. I have notes. I'm gonna give, give it. I'm gonna give it to Charlemagne. I'm gonna give it to Charlemagne. Is that on every question I've asked? Because because uh, because, yeah, because <clears throat> Angela Angela for hold every, on now. Tra- go ahead. For every infrastructure project in your community, you can go to you third page. Just to highlight a portion. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Congress that voted for the American Rescue Plan. Angela, that's what you, that's what should be happening. Larry Summers wrote an op-ed. Back in 2021, Larry, Som- Larry Summers was the Treasury Secretary for Bill Clinton. He was an economic advisor to Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. He said that the American Rescue Plan that Joe Biden wanted, that Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate, would create a massive inflation that we have not seen in a generation. Well, guess what? Larry Summers was correct. You know who also was correct, Angela? I was, because I was in the Budget Committee when they brought the bill. And I said in that committee, it's going to cause massive inflation. That's what happened. So the problem we have in our economy today is that prices have gone up massively. Wages adjusted for inflation is down. People's pocketbooks are hurting. But we have a presidential election of 40 days. So and I'm going to ask Envy this question. Envy, you do you do how you do you, you get, you're in the housing business as well. I know because I watch it. I listen to the show. No, I'm just asking them a question. Chill, Angela. So, I, you know, I, and I listen to the show. I know you do a lot of business. in. Housing. She was so salty that he broke this down. And you can see Charlemagne still over there reading. He, he hasn't said nothing yet. Housing. Mm-hmm. Would you hire somebody that broke up stuff in one of your houses to fix the other houses? No. Exactly. Boom. She broke the economy. Boom. I'm that's not going to do this not me. this morning, Byron. Why, why so are you not going to do this, Angela? Chill. Because I'm, I'm bringing facts. And and I, and hold on now. So now I'm bringing facts and, and you don't want to do it no more? Come on now, Angela. That's not right. I'm bringing so, facts. So and back, you, I thought so we were going to have a fact-based conversation. I want to have a fact-based conversation. You wanted to bring up votes. And so let's talk about votes. Go ahead. You have a 96% voting record with heritage action. Angela, and for I'm those not running who are for listening, president, but we can talk about for, the, for those who are listening, yeah. um, heritage action is a part of the Heritage Foundation, which is the, ar- the architect of Project 2025, which we can talk about more later. People are starting to say this Democratic woman are just very angry. Um, and it's not really looking good for a lot of the, the Democratic Party, a lot of the Democratic woman, because... As you can see, they go up here on this platform and they kind of bring her on every time because they know she's just going to come out the gate just firing. I mean, she just reads off her paper, finds every single flaw or every single thing she tries to critique. But during this whole interview, he handled himself really, really, really well. And the sad part is they want him. They were criticizing him for dating a white woman and be asked him like, yo, aren't you are you married to a black woman? Which they already know the answer to. And the funny thing is, the person they're defending, Madam VP, is married to a white man raising his children. So they want to talk about Byron. Oh, you're not for black people. You're not for black people. But Kamala literally has a white husband. So and they want to defend her blackness so bad. But Kamala has a white husband and everybody else wants to criticize everyone besides her for her stepping out of her blackness and getting a white husband. But you can see there's a bias here. And that's the problem with politics. And that's the problem with the Breakfast Breakfast Club right now. Because you got two females up there going after Byron. Then you got Envy and Charlemagne kind of playing the fence, not really asking questions. Because after he gave him that paper, you saw Charlemagne didn't say nothing. They immediately switched the subject. They switched the subject when he gave them the facts about how she broke the economy. Because you don't hear this in media about how she was that person to give that other vote. Nobody hears about that. So when Donald Trump was talking about, yo, Joe Biden doesn't actually like Kamala, he doesn't actually like her, yeah, I thought he was just trolling. There could be real internal conflicts that you have no idea about. But the point with me, then, even the, the economic op- the opportunity economy package he's been talking about, oh, I got receipts on that. I got receipts on that. Let me, let me, um, I wonder if I could, I probably can't even find the tweet that I have put out. But if you go look yourself, and if not, 
shoot me a dm leave a comment let me know if you guys want to see it the 12 billion dollars that she's claimed to have raised and has put back into the community into local banks that was from a bill that donald trump signed during covid it was a 12 billion dollar package for the banks the community banks that she's been talking about and if you look at one of her transcripts one of her speeches she said this 12 billion we spent 10 billion dollars of 12 billion that we that i've been working on since my time in the senate um last time i checked kamala was in the senate in 2021 she wasn't even vice president yet. that was the end of her time at the senate and this package was pushed out during the covid it was a covid package so she's taking credit for something that was signed during the trump administration and making every black person in america believe that she's been generating billions and billions for black economic opportunity but it was trump so there's a lot of flaws there's a lot of bias as you can see for yourself in this conversation but um like i say man you let me know your thoughts this is why i can't get too involved in this because it's corruption it's all bias it's all messed up you let me know your thoughts it is your boy dre man shout out byron um god damn you they, they they tried to gang up on him man he held his own i encourage you to watch that whole interview but i just want to highlight the most important parts because they tried it but um this is why you can't listen to everybody even though they sound super smart reading off of notes it's your boy dre i'm gone peace